Hey, welcome to Tales from the Dark Side and our first uh, arc review. It's going to be on Darth Vader Volume 1. We're going to be reviewing 1 through 4. We we're going to try to do a whole TBB 1 through 6, but that seemed a little bit long. We're going to try out 1 through 4, see how that works. We'll be right back. We're going to show panels. We would say spoiler, but dude, come on. 2015. <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We've got a bunch of covers. We're not going to go through all these. As you may or may not know, uh, Granoff did the covers for these. There is five prints. The yellow print is the ghost print. You don't see a lot of it. Uh, this is a simpler time. The white print is the director's cut print. There was a black and white one too, but that's it. You got a Scotty Young. You got Christopher action figure. Obviously, um, because he did a lot of the interior art, you got a LaRocca um a couple other ones on there you've got the rosses there was the sketch one there was the one that was at the store there was the colored version of that you got some gamestop ones i mean look there was a ton of covers for this choose a cover that you like best go out there and grab it um some I, are I do love that second i, I love both alex ross because i'm a huge alex ross fan but that second one when he's riding the mythosaur is awesome I do like the Java one too in the bottom. I think that one's really cool. And yeah. that I think that was a store variant though. Look, um, real cool. There's a lot of cool ones. Anakin being locked up in Vader's thing on their way. Whichever one's your favorite, go out there and get it. Okay, uh, we're going to start each one of these with just the scroll. If you want to read the scroll, feel free. Just pause the video, read the scroll. We're going to move on from the scroll real quickly. We are going to state this. The timeline for this book, for the Vader 1 Volume 1, was after the first Death Star blew up. It was almost like right after, but they've now put more space in there. Either way. Okay, so this is, so Vader goes to Tatooine after the Death Star apparently blows up and we will see who he's looking for. Obviously, he ignites the lightsaber. Man, why do you gotta mess with the Gomorian guards, dude? I love those dudes. You shouldn't be messing with them like that. Uh, he sees a little bit of Bib Fortuna. Also, these are chronologically first time they show up, not in comic. I mean, they've shown up in comics before but like timeline wise that's what we're saying it's and then you get um him showing up in front of the hut and they have their back and forth obviously vader's no nonsense he is standing on the mark they do make a little speech about how he didn't step on the trap door uh which is very funny um very good back and forth then you see a jawa just take one to the face how are you gonna do that to a poor jawa Either well, way, they're trying to mess with Vader and and Vader's about to put the smack down. That's one of the things I really like about this book is by page like three, you're already into solid Darth Vader cutting off arms, just massive. This is how powerful I am. I am Vader. Yeah. I don't know why they opened the door for him, but whatever. Uh, is uh, Either way. Or maybe that's why they get the security door afterwards. So he starts to give the force choke to Jawa or to uh, Jabba the Hut. After that, we kind of do a flashback. We kind of do a flash or a timeline thing where he gets back to the Emperor and the Emperor kind of talks to him a little bit. <clears throat> he about how the first Dar Death Star blew up. The rebels got there. There was a little time lapse thing where Vader has a flashback of Obi Wan and the yellow lightsaber. Um, they talk a little bit more what's going on. You see that there's some there's a rebel that they're torturing. It was kind of cool, like you know, to see how. The, I mean, I guess it's not cool. Yeah, it's cool. No, to see because they were always talking about how they're torturing people and how they're gonna torture Leia. And you see the whole actual setup now, which is interesting. Um, he tells them that there's a couple more plans. I don't. They talk about uh, for the first time, kind of. They talk about Tag and General Tag, which becomes I think he becomes Grand Admiral Tag after this yes. because yes, he, does. he takes he over for. Loaded. He takes over for Tarkin, uh, right. and he's a compared to Tarkin, whatever. Yeah, anyway, he's just very pompous, and he's very full of himself, and he's just he's no Tarkin, but he not. sure likes to think that he is. Al, the Emperor does back him. The Emperor says he was right. He said that Tarkin's Tarkin's initiatives were a little bit. Um, Tag thought that Tarkin's initiatives were biting off a little bit more than he could chew. And when the Death Star blew up, he said, see, I told you so. Yep. So the Emperor says, Vader, now you got to listen to this guy. We'll see how that goes. Um, Vader notices a guy. Yes, in the first panel up at top, in the second panel, it is the same guy. Even though he gained 80 pounds between the top panel and the second panel, we will forgive that. It is the like a cameo of CeeLo number four. four. CeeLo four. Yep. CeeLo four. 
He's like a little cyber guy. We'll get more into him later. Actually, through the series, we'll get into a lot more of him. But you get to see him a little bit there. The Emperor says, you do not see this guy. Tries to play a mind trick on Vader. Vader's like, no, I see him. He goes, yeah, yeah, none of your business. Get out of here, Vader. So Vader gets out of there, and a day later, you see him on the mountains. And who is he finding? Oh, we get a little first appearance of our boy, Black K. How do you say that name again? Crass. Black Chrysanthemum. There he goes. That's as close as we're going to get is Chrysanthemum. So he is the uh, black colored Wookiee. He's hanging out with Boba Fett. There's a certain mission for him. They get a couple pages with these two going back and forth, being put on special missions, growling back. They do a lot of growling uh, out of him. It becomes like the sidekick of Han Solo and Chewbacca, the bounty hunter version. That would make yes. an awesome cover. The bounty hunter version. And then do that. Hopefully they do that. Anyways, that's pretty much the end of it. He puts them on a special mission. And the special mission, then we go into book number two. Here comes a bunch more covers. Book number two. Uh, once again, we get the special yellow, which means we're up to five printings. I really, honestly, I wish they would still do this with different printings. Just change the color of the background. That way, you know which printing you're getting up to. And instead of using interior art, which sometimes just doesn't play out that well. Um, he it also makes it easy and congruent and like you were saying, and that way, you know, every one is the same. It, it one, two, three, four, five. It's just a genius way to do it. Please stick with what works, right? You're also going to get a Laraka. Well, I mean, we think it works. Other people might not. That's okay. Whatever. But you also get a Laraka. I just think that these in the Star Wars books, it did, especially these, like, like when you have somebody like Granoff doing such great covers, like, it's if you have a great cover artist and it's working, stick with it. Yeah, you do have a Laraka too, though. And uh, well, you know, there's less books than there was on number one. Here's the scroll. So, once again, if you want to follow the scroll, and we refer to it as a scroll because it was the scroll at the beginning of the TV show, the movie's not really that it's a this thing's obviously stationary. It's a frozen because, scroll, yeah, frozen scroll. <laughs> Here's the frozen scroll. Feel free to look it over there too. You can see the writers. And obviously, Gillen's done a great job on these this series. There's lots of lots of stuff now that's panning out for him. Um, you know, really cool stuff there. You get a little bit of uh, Laraka too as the artist. A couple other people there of noteworthy in the uh, executive editors and stuff like that. Okay, first page. Enough. It starts off with a lot of action. There is a pirate ship trying to, and nope, it does. It blows up an imperial ship. But who's there to save him? Vader. And Vader comes in and just uh, takes out the engines. Once which is again, another book they get into, they dive right in, and boom, look, here's Vader, and he's bad. Like, don't mess with Vader. Like, there, this is I the mean, Vader we always wanted. We there wanted is to see a, his yeah. badness, and they show it. They did a great one panel of his ship coming into. It was really cool. They've done a you know, they did a lot of one panels here or like three quarter page panels where you just see like one action pose, which is pretty nice. I didn't add those in Buy the books, though. Open them up every once in a while. Um, so here he is talking with Tag and the arrogance just comes out. Tag pretty much goes, hey, listen, I'm in charge now. This is what we're going to do. We're going to fix the ship. We're going to send it back to the pirates and I'm going to give him a little surprise. Oh, P.S. I got a surprise for you. And he goes, yeah, what's that, buddy? Well, actually, he doesn't say that, but he should have said that. <laughs> Anyways, Tag goes, I'm going to send this little lieutenant, Lieutenant Ona, Ona. O-O-N hyphen A-I. It doesn't matter o what his name is. It doesn't o matter what his name is because he's not going to be around for too much longer. Okay. Much. So he gets in there and he gets into, into Vader's face and he's like, I need all your access. And, I, and Vader's like, listen, um, keep it up there, little guy. But he gives him all the access either way. And then uh, they jump on, well, they send the ship back. Now, these characters right here obviously are the uh, Chromar Syndicate. They work for the Chromar Syndicate, which has a connection to the droid Grata. They're like, cool, our droids have gone out there and taken all the Imperial weapons. It's awesome. We've done it. We have, we'll have weapons so that we can, you know, sell them, attack them, whatever syndicates do. Oh, no, but the only weapon on there is Vader, and Vader just decides to choke slam somebody. They do shut the door. In the meantime, I didn't do this whole panel because I just wanted to highlight one part. You do get the first mention of Dr. Afra in here, um, which is kind of cool. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's cool. A little mention. Um, they roll out droids. They start blowing up stormtroopers. 
they're doing everything they can do. Obviously, there's a myster uh, mischievous droid on the outside jumping in. Vader goes, well, if you can do that, I'll start sending missiles back for you. Who shoots a rocket missile like in an airlo airlock area? I don't know, but somebody did. <laughs> I guess one of your against Vader, you got to try something <laughs> like you just you got to lob something out there. I mean, you're you're not your chances are small as is. So whatever. I, I mean, whatever is works because uh, Vader goes, yeah, not today. Flings him right back at him with the force. And then that goes, hey, let's just throw in our plan because they're dying. Blow up the ship. Vader says. Well, actually, little Oa, Oa, his name doesn't matter, says, oh my gosh, we're going to blow up again. And Vader goes, yeah, not today. We're not blowing up today. I will stop it. And he ends up stopping it, kind of, but blows something else up. That leads us to the next page where he goes, hey, Tag, remember your little buddy here? Oa, doesn't matter what his name is. Yeah, took care of him because it turns out that he's actually a spy who is leaking out information. Next time you want to give me a babysitter, make sure your babysitter isn't a spy or else. And, and he pretty much says, make sure he watches me as closely as I'm going to watch them. Great line. Because he's like, you know, you can send with me whoever you want. And they can watch me as much as they want. But remember, I'm Darth Vader. I'm watching them more than they're, you know, watching me. Right. And 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 that's part of it, too. Like, it is, it is a big part that he is explaining to Tag at this point. Like, and maybe we'll get into it later uh, down the road when we review some of the other books. But you can keep sending these guys after me, but you're not you, just because the Emperor says you're in charge. Do remember, I know everything about you too, and I'm in charge. And I, I think, think this simple. is a small toss back to the first book when the Emperor is telling him, We had an epic, the biggest failure that emp my empire has ever had when we lost the Death Star. And that rides on you. You're the sole survivor, so it rides on you. So now I, Vader's kind of riding that line of, oh, I'll make it right. I will say it's a little interesting, though, the relationship. I'll get into the last panel right here before we get into the next book, which is a big book. But uh, he does say, like, uh, um, droids, you one can always trust a droid. Well, as he's shooting a droid out of an airlock and blowing him up. That's how you can trust him. I will get into this real quickly. I do think part of that part of what they're doing here with it. They wouldn't do it the same way because they have now come up with backstories where like Tarkin and they do it later on in some, in like volume two because it goes backwards where they're not exactly as enemies as they were at this point. At this point in the storyline, there was that really like almost competition hatred towards Tarkin and Darth Vader. They're after they've done novels and stuff like that, they become more friendly. So this was kind of like, Oh, Tarkin's out. You're still not that important and the, i'm gonna put tag in place because he's more important than you right yeah it look man we'll talk about more of it as we go on this series is absolutely great though i mean they just keep pushing out new characters that they won with almost every character that they did i mean even the ones that didn't last that long i think when people get through this book they'll be like oh yeah i forgot about that character or oh i really like those characters and everything like that and it's it's well written it's it really some is. of the some of the one one panels are a little wordy but it it reads so easily it doesn't feel wordy at all through any of these for well for me anyway it didn't yeah. so we get droid blowing up out the airlock and then we go into book number three this is the book that everybody knows or at least everybody should know it's the dr afra book we don't need just a mention of her anymore but it is the dr afra book here is the scroll for the dr afra book got a lot of good people on there once again Pause it if you want. Hey, Heather Antos on an Afro book. Wonder why that is. Welcome to Michigan. <laughs> All right. She's she she used to shop at my local LCS. A uh, good she's definitely a good woman. Um here you go. And she has a DD &D character, very similar to one of the characters in this book. <coughs> First page is Afra. Dr. Afra. I wonder why she's dealing with droids. And isn't it? Um whatever she is. She does have a lot of similarities. She is going into a vault right now. Um, in the vault, there is that gleaming thing. It turns out that gleaming thing is, is actually, oops, skip the page, skip two pages. Turned out that the gleaming thing is actually a chip. The chip is the triple zero chip. The triple zero chip is kind of an interrogation assassin droid chip. She was put on by the droid Grata to steal this chip. Um, 
then, you know, obviously they made this character a lot like when their original thing was we need an Indiana Jones. So this is how this character was brought up. Obviously, they did a little bit of a homage here to here as they do the ball, the Draken, Draken, Droidicod ball coming down, chasing after uh, Afra. Um, obviously, they've added other things onto it from somebody's D and D character. I'm not saying anything. Well, and then know. in the next, in the next one, when she's the next talking one, to she is now over here. So this is also too. So this is Uta U U T. Unta, U-T-A-N-I. She's kind of like one of these droids that are in charge of like guarding all the specialty droid stuff from the target. Because that was originally part of the Tarkin initiative. Um, so it's like a safe. The droids are having a safe here. And she's like, yeah, I'll get it back. Fine, fine. And then all of a sudden, do, do, and do. In that last panel, they give another throwback to the Indiana Jones when she tells Unta Ai or whatever um, that it should be in a museum. This 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 computer chip should be in you know a museum, not in a vault. Yeah, but she steals a lot of stuff. She does. Yeah, yeah. She but I, I thought that was kind of yeah. Cool it's kind they, of a joke. They it's, really yeah. rolled that whole that little throwback to Indy. She did. I, yeah, I, they it did. Was cool. so, well, done. it was cool. It really was. I did. I actually like the rolling there. I mean, it's cool how they put these parts together. If you know some of the backstory of this character, it's two things melted together. It's somebody's dungeon dragon character, and she keeps referring it to her as her baby, and that's why. And Indiana Jones, so that's why it's a female instead of a boy. Um, over here, we got Vader coming in, and all of a sudden, he's told, "Hey, you can't be here. This is a neutral planet, Doctor or uh, Darth Vader." And what do you think Darth Vader thinks about that? Too bad for you. Does a little throwing now. Here, if you notice that the covers, and we only we didn't go over the covers that well, but the second cover is a LaRocca and the reason why we know it's a LaRocca is because it's kind of some of these panels put together he did them that's where that famous scene is I know a lot of people think it's a swipe from something else it isn't it's technically some of the in interior panel places either way next up we get another first we get the Archangel uh that is Dr. Alfra's plane transport what her yes. ship no a little off topic but on topic what do you think of Dr. Afra's ship? When you first saw, and, and even today, when you see it, what what do you think? This picture or later on? This this picture, because this is really the first time we so get this, to see this her. This picture ship. I thought they took I thought this was slave six. Like I thought they took slave one and slapped on some other pieces to it and kind of made it a combination of slave one. <laughs> And a couple other things, and she threw it together uh, to make it Slave 6. That's what I thought. Is yeah, that what you were it, feeling? I, I I didn't. I'm always, can every time I look at this panel, I get confused of what I'm looking at. Because the ship is just, it's just the roundness of, of a blockade. And then, like you said... Slave six on the front end in an elongated nose, almost like the front end of, of the um the hammerhead, the Corvette with the, the ram on it. Yeah, but so here it, I think it, it shows it's a weird kind of ship. I'm not sure. I think that might be it sitting next to Vader. We will see it sitting down at, in one of these books or how yes. it kind of lands or whatever, like that. Uh, it is a very awkward ship. It's cool though. I mean, it's definitely cool. I don't I know do why like the way that ships dock to it on the back like that. You can see Vader's ship docked on it now, which is yeah. a really unique take. But I no, just was cool. curious for all the people out there. Tell us what you think in the chat, please. Absolutely. And give us a thumbs up while you're down there. Hit the subscribe button and the bell so you get notified. Afra's kind of, you know, it's interesting about this character. The Afra character starts off a little bit like the Sokotana character or how she reads, sure. in my opinion. Absolutely. She starts off a little bit like hesitant and goofy and not as confident. Um, and here she's kind of like, oh, hey, Mr. Darth or Death, Darth Vader, sir, Lord, whatever. And it's like, okay, it doesn't play that great. Then she goes, wait, how did you find me? You get this panel and she goes, ah, I'd rather not know. She goes and finds this protocol droid. She throws it in there. Oh, wow. Red eyes on a protocol droid. Wonder where they got the idea from that. Wait, no. Wonder who got an idea from that for this. Yes, this was the original red eyes. Okay, there you go. And that gives us a, oh, hello. And by the way, isn't that like the same line on the movie as, oh, hello, or something to that effect? I don't yeah. know if it was. Yeah, it is. It is? They'll wow. toss back to the old Anthony Daniels. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which also does it in the other. Yes, the movie wheel. Totally different robot, but when I read it, I still hear the Anthony Daniels voice. Yeah, even though he's saying just twisted things. So next, he introduces himself as Triple Zero. So now he is the Triple Zero. It's no longer just the chip. Vader's intrigued and is like, why do you like all these droids or whatever? She goes, oh, I don't just have one. I have two. I have a BT-1. And this one, unlike the interrogation droid, is a straight-up menace. He's part of the Tarkin Initiative, and I was also supposed to uh, save him because of the droid Grata. But look at this. He's got tons of weapons. And Triple Zero goes, no, 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 no. They're our friends. They will spec up. Please don't blow them up, BT-1. We need them, even though Vader's ready to take them out. So she starts doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. By the way, Darth Vader in this book did help her break the code of the triple zero to get it so that you could install it into a, um, into a droid. We get the end of that. She says, Hey, look, uh, Vader, you want to go on a little trip with me? Cause I got someplace else to go. He's like, Oh really? And she goes, yep, let's go. We're going to go to Geonosa or Geonosa. Then we've got the next round of covers. We have got obviously, uh, you know, the grand off, there's only three now. Now we're down to green. I did put in the BAM, which books a million or like uh, half price books, I guess. is No, it was uh, second in Charles, whatever. I put in that book. You can still find these around because everybody took those Canaan's out of those packs. And you can find the uh, Noto, which is the Luke Skywalker one. And then, of course, you've got the LaRocca cover two, which is the variant. Here is the scroll. Uh, check out all the cool people again. What's up, Pantos? How you doing? Um, the next page is the first page. They are there. See, that's cool. Like it does land a little bit. Like I know it's different now with Slave One, but originally, you know, there was that the docking thing where it pushed down. Mm -hmm. You could slide it on, or you could go out the back end of it. It was kind of weird how they did Slave One. So, but this is kind of cool. So you see the ramp in the back of it. Very interesting. So it like suspends. I guess we'll yeah. check out more later. We will check out more later as they develop the books. She gets down there. She sees all the dead people. She's like, oh, something's going on here. This is supposed to be a robot factory. What's up? Uh, once again, doing work for the droid Grata. And then she goes in there and, oh, my why, gosh. Why? If you go back to Geonosha, knowing all the battle that happened, and there's a big hole in the ground, what part of you says, let's climb into the big hole in the ground on Geonosha where the large battle happened? <laughs> this... <laughs> I got a bad feeling about this. I always have a bad feeling about it. <laughs> this technically was the book that they first mentioned the droid Grata in. They referenced it before. This is where they actually mentioned it. Um, but you also get this, which is zombie robot Geonosians. Is that when something? You, when you run out of what, that something? Uh, battle droid parts, you just you know de splice DNA from Geonosians on them. I, I don't know, but hey, it's technically, cool. when you run out of Geonosians, you splice together battle droid Robot parts. parts on them. That that makes more sense. Yeah. So it turns out that the queen, uh, she is not um, viable anymore. She can't produce any more eggs. But they have to get out of here. Triple Zero is not a fan of these things. But BT One knows how to handle it. You just set them all on fire. It is kind of funny. So the writing even gets better here. There is a lot of like joke stuff, but it's not kid appropriate jokes. Um, he does speak some Geonosin at the end. That's what the translation is at the bottom where he goes, ha ha, you're on fire and also dead. That's triple zero's humor, which plays out through some of the books and some of the Afro books later on. Twisted. Yeah, he's messed up. Twisted 3PO. She's like, oh, well, whatever. Then they see her and the queen is still alive. She is not a droid, but she's attached into like a droid mechanism to the, the place to build it. Afra goes, wow, she really thinks these are her family and her kids and everything like that. She's like intruders. And Vader goes, yeah, I'm going to cut you off this piece of metal. So you're not going to be building any more droids. Slices her, gets the green goo to drop everywhere. Solo Wookiee thinks this is an alien swipe. Uh, I can't tell if it's a, a swipe or an homage. Yeah, I mean, it's very homage esque. Very homage esque. I mean, the the aliens when we saw the queen for the first time, it took my breath away, and I was like, "Wow, this is awesome!" So to see him do it, and they did a good job. I feel I don't feel like they did a disjustice in the way that they tell of this queen and what she is doing. So it, maybe homage is a better word than than a swipe. 
the queen does bring up a uh, clone wars reference she talks about the bombs that were laid down you do if you watch clone wars you know that there's a point where they um they just bomb the planet so uh there's that and then she goes okay well you cut me off but that doesn't matter because now i've got this whole army they still are families and they go after vader bt1 saves them before they destroy the rest of those like metal things in the queen but that's okay whatever you gotta do what you gotta do to survive uh towards the end we did skip a little bit but towards the end once again buy the books if you want to see more of the story you get triple zero coming in oh i've got somebody well i guess in <clears throat> in one when they said that they were going to send um that vader was sending out Boba Fett and Black K for a mission. The mission that he was sending him out there for was to catch this mysterious character. And the mysterious character says, I'm not going to tell you anything but my name. That is when our friend triple zero goes, uh, well, before he says that Vader's like, Hey, good. I wasn't going to ask you anyways, because he knows that triple zero is crazy as heck. And triple zero is like, Ooh, it's my time to have fun. He tortures, uh, CeeLo, Kylo, CeeLo, 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 CeeLo. He Solo turns, si well, I said four times, so there's <laughs> four times. Um, he, he charges them and then comes back to Vader and goes, Vader, we got all the information we needed out of him. Uh, we have his name. We have everything about him, and we're going to go on from there. Real cool, too. By the way, also, I just wanted to reiterate, back in one, we also see for the first time, um, we do get to see the ship that tag runs and he calls himself grand admiral at that point, yep. but they're yep. on that ship. The ship is the annihilator, the annihilator. And that's and first appearance. And actually that's in two. two. It's in yeah, two. Yeah. Two. So we see it in there that has a little bit of importance and may show back up because it was in the aftermath books and some pirates had captured it and ended up taking it to the wild space. So we never know if we're going to see that again, but just so you know, they did that and it is called the Liberty misrule now it is no longer the annihilator because the pirate that took it over didn't like the name just a little how do you not like that what a cool name for a ship <laughs> yeah i hey listen whatever so uh, just that's that's just a little speak on that too arg, remember i don't like it <laughs> those yellow covers are kind of weird to look or hard to find anyways um they're cool but they're hard to find they just are good luck on those um that is one through four we will probably do, we'll see what the next arc works like, but I think we're going to do probably five through eight. Yeah. Wow. wow that was bad. That was hard math for me. Five through eight in the next one. It's been a long day. <laughs> Look, man, the whole, this whole series is good. I was thinking about switching off, but I don't think I am. I think we're just going to do, we're going to probably do four or five of these per show. Go through them. If you guys do want to hear more panels, go down there. If you think this is just great the way it is, cool. We'll keep it that way. Just let us know. I love everybody in the live chat. I know we'll be in the live chat. We'll get some of that feedback right now. But if you put it down below, it's it, I can go back and look again, and it'll remind me what which way we should go with these. Um, hey, listen, triple zero. <laughs> I don't. The problem is I don't want to give away too much of the stories of everything else that's coming up with it too. I'm, Absolutely, might, and it's and it's hard at this point because it. There's such good points to talk about that are coming up, but you're exactly right. It's it's really hard not to talk about them and give away the story to come. And there is some parts like that. There is some crossover mini events that are usually, I think they're like four part series or six part series, mm -hmm. like the cathedral and like, um, is it down, Vader down that are in yep, there? Vader down. So maybe, and and well, the regulars run the Star Wars volume. Yeah. So across, so maybe we'll do that. Yeah. Maybe. We'll stick with the Vader one, but when it comes up to that, we'll split off and do their mini uh, arcs that go through there too. If you don't think that's a good idea, if you'd rather us just keep it the way it is and go through them four to five a piece, let us know. We'll put there. Hopefully the panels were great. If you can't see the panels, we could put in less panels, but if we put in less panels, it is what it is. Um, give us some feedback. Like I said, we're trying this new. I hope everybody enjoyed it. This is one of this is like, I like all the Vader series, but this Vader series, when I went back to read it again, I was like, man, this Vader series, they really did a good job on this Vader series. And it's not just because of the new characters that they put in it. There's just certain things that they did in there where you're like, man, I the covers were just on point. They really were. The A covers were great. I mean, 
they Great really covers, work. lots of good um, secondary covers and closed market covers and and shop, you know, LCS covers. All the covers are really nice. the The way they wrote it was really good. I feel like this is the Vader that everybody wanted to see, rather than you know, whiny Anakin or any of the other issues that we all had with the movies and all of the other things. This is the super kick butt Vader that comes out, doesn't care, doesn't take names, just goes out, kicks butt, takes what he wants, gets it done, moves on to the next challenge. This this volume, absolutely, I love it. It's a Every, great, yeah, great Star read. Wars, when they redid it, there was a lot of backlash um, about the canon issue and everything like that. This series in particular, this one, this Vader's volume one was kind of when you start to see the turn to people say, Oh, this is what they're doing. If this is what they're doing. Okay. I'm okay with it. And, and it gets better. Believe me. I mean, it does like the whole series is pretty darn good. So we'll definitely cover the rest of the series here. I'm going to give you all the covers one more time just so that you can see it. Cause I know people love the covers. So here we go. Um, these are all the covers, number ones that I pulled. I think there's a couple more than this. There's probably like five more covers than this, but the, the cool, it's really cool that they did it. So the regular cover, then you get the red, which is always number two, the green, which is always number three, the purple, that's supposed to be a purplish blue. That's always number four. And the yellow which is number five director's cut. Those did come in different packs. Like those come in some of the packs you could buy at like stores, the repacks or reprints. You got to see that a lot. It's a little thicker sometimes. I think, I think this one is too, a little thicker of a, a stock card. Yeah. You got the Scotty Youngs. You got the Christophers there. Um, uh, the LaRocca. And, and like you had said earlier, I have never, it's a ghost. I have never seen a number uh, five yellow. Yeah, I haven't seen it in these. person. I've only actually seen it online, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, after that, because we gave you two sets of this just because there was so many more. You have the Rosses there up at the top. Um, I will say this, uh, the GameStop ones too. The Rosses, I haven't checked in a while, but I knew that the uh, Boba Fett Ross one became popular at his store. Like if you go to Ross's store, it became popular after the yep. uh, after after the Mandalorian show showed up. Um, then for books number two, here we go. We reduced it a little bit. We did it only on one panel. Once again, you get up to number five. That guy with his arms crossed is tag. So. The purple really shoots out well. I actually like the purple one of the best of these covers just because of how it looks. And then once again, you have, uh, you know, some little rockers on there doing his thing. Number three, just so we're clear, uh, it's number one. The second book here is the Laraka, which is the inside artist. Then you've got two, which is red and three, which is the green book. A lot of that, that green cover is getting a lot of interest in it lately. A lot, a lot of interest. Then for four, You've got, once again, the Grand Off for number one, the Laraka for number two. The third book here is the Book of Millions book, which is a net NATO. And then you've got, wait a minute, dude. Did that just happen? It did just happen. They didn't go red. They went, oh, I screwed these up. Yep. You know what I'm saying then. Figure it no, out. Red. Do the color code. Oh, yeah. They did red, red for the red. first book, though. Yep. They switched the two colors. Yep. They did red for one. Two this time they did like the regular bluish black cover, and then three they did the green. I didn't screw it up, but then I screwed it up saying I screwed it up. <laughs> so <laughs> you're right. So there you have it. We'll have more uh, of this series on the next one. Maybe we'll we'll try to flip the format around a little bit. We really appreciate you guys tuning into this. Thanks again, and uh, may the force be with you. Always, always. Tech up.